so hello to everyone viewing this. Um, my name is Alex and um, I work as the outreach administrator with the Indigenous Health Professions Program. Um, and I'd like to welcome uh, everyone who's viewing this. So for parents, guardians, uh, guidance counselors at schools, teachers and Indigenous community members. Um, I'd like to thank you for viewing our uh, uh, how to apply slash uh, virtual information session for our 2019 Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp. We're going to be talking a little bit about what the application process is like, um, but at the same time going into the details of basically what the camp is about. So we have our table of contents here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a few things. Uh, so first off, I'm going to talk a little bit about what our program is and who we are. Then I'm going to go into what our Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp looks like um, in a snapshot. And I'll get a little bit more into detail about that later. Uh, then we'll go into detail about the camper application and what we're looking for. After that, we'll do the same thing for junior counselor applications. Um, following that, we're going to be uh, talking about how you can submit your application, whether you're a junior counselor or camper. And then we're going to conclude. So let's go ahead and do that. So in regards to the Indigenous Health Professions Program, um, this has been a program uh, made through McGill University and has we're a fairly new program. We've been around for about two years. We officially launched last year and we really developed this program in consultation with um, a lot of the indigenous communities um, in Quebec mainly. Um, we also did a lot of collaboration with other indigenous health programs at other universities, um, at other McGill departments here um, and other committees and programs. And our program is really based on the goal of improving the health of Indigenous peoples in Canada. And we really see the best way of doing that or how we want to help with that is by increasing the number of Indigenous health workers in communities, in urban environments, overall just getting more Indigenous people into these professions. Um, and at the bottom there I have highlighted, or underlined rather, um, one of our main objectives. And, and my role is outreach this is essentially uh, the basis of what my position entails. So we're looking to increase the readiness and the interest of Indigenous students who apply to get into these health professional programs. Oftentimes, these can be seen as, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of difficulty into getting into these programs. And there are a lot of barriers, I think, or we think, um, that Indigenous people have to go through. And so how we decided to kind of go about increasing the readiness and the interest of students, at least the younger ones, is by hosting a summer camp. The uh, Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp or ESSF camp, um, we've been hosting it uh, for about two years now. We officially had our new camp last year, the new model. Uh, and this year, this summer, it will be uh, our second annual Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp. This is just a photo of the cohort that we had last year. So um, we had a number of students all the way from uh, Northern Quebec or Nunavik. Um, we also had a number of students from Anishinaabe territory uh, near Gidigan Zibi. Um, we had a student come from my reserve actually, which is uh, Listiguch. And um, we try to engage a number of different nations in Quebec to uh, take part in our camp. So um, those nations include the Algonquin Nation, uh, the Inuit, um, the Mi'kmaq, the Mohawk, as well as the Cree. Um, last year we didn't get any Cree applicants and so we're hoping this year that we see you know, a larger number of students applying and that we get those students uh, from Cree territories interested in our camp. I might also mention that in this photo we have a number of uh, students who are also Mohawk. This is basically a rundown of what we do um, on a daily basis. It's a very jam-packed schedule and not included here are some evening activities that we do with our students as well. Instead of uh, going through this uh, one by one, thought I'd take you through what a day at Eagle Spirit Camp looks like. Last year in the mornings, we started each day with more of a traditional or an indigenous traditional um, event. Uh, we did storytelling uh, most days. 
We were able to actually do a nature walk last year as well with a Mohawk elder. Photo that I have here um, is just after um, an Algonquin elder all the way on the right here, if you can see my mouse cursor, uh, his name is Joe. He shared some of the pikehead teachings from the Algonquin nation um, and also shared some stories about, you know, his life. And this was to really start each day on good intentions, but also give us a teaching goal at the same time. We thought that by starting the day off with indigenous storytelling was a great way to kind of start, um, start each day with a good intention, as I said. One of the things that we did afterwards was we had the students uh, work in a lab setting. So here um, you can see our uh, camp educator, Mike Daibo, he's from uh, Gitigan Zibi, who really made a curriculum uh, centered on these teachings that these students were receiving. So after the you know, indigenous storytelling would be done, we'd move up into a cl classroom that had a lot of lab equipment. We had the students you know, have the experience of you know, having proper safety, you know, putting on lab coats, wearing goggles, uh, gloves. And Mike put them through a number of different science experiments, all based around what those teachings were in the morning. So for uh, Joe's pikehead teachings, for example, one of the things that uh, Mike did with the students was he showed them some life skills, but also some lab skills at the same time. He was able to catch a number of fish that he brought to Montreal. And in groups, um, the students learned how to fillet fish. So they learned these life skills and how to, you know, um, include, include nutrition um, and also more of a traditional lens on, you know, our relationship with food into a teaching. And then after that, what we did was we identified some of the organs of these fish. And so it was kind of that union of um, traditional kind of life skills with uh, a, a more science approach as well. And each day kind of revolved around these teachings um, based on what the topic was of the day. After that, we would move on and we did each day we would work with a different uh, program at McGill, specifically a health program. And these were uh, basically workshops that we did with them. So in this photo, what you can see here is we have one of our junior counselors and one of our counselors, who is actually a medical student, um, working with another medical student, learning how they take blood samples or how they train to be able to take blood samples from people when they are in their own health profession. And so you can see here, there's this really interesting uh, apparatus here. It's, a, uh, it's a, an arm that has a pump through it that kind of simulates what flowing, circulating blood would be like in a, an actual person's arm. And here we're teaching, the, or they're teaching the students how that process works. So you can see that they're creating a tourniquet to uh, make a blood vessel more visible. And then they learn how to actually use a needle to... Um, take blood from somebody's vein. And again, this idea of getting them used to, um, you know, getting these life skills and getting these skills that will help them in not only the classroom, but in if they want to pursue post-secondary studies, they would have this experience already. And this was also to get them interested in health sciences. It's usually often that people are gonna work with doctors and nurses in their own communities or in their everyday life. But oftentimes, I think it's pretty prominent that the students don't really know a lot about what the job entails or what it's like to train as one of these health professionals. And so we wanted to give them that exposure. So each day, we, like I said, we worked with a different health professional program. And there they learned a little bit about what it's like to work and train in that field. And then we also did some fun activities in the evenings as well. So um, here we took the kids actually to the West Island in Montreal and we went kayaking and wakeboarding. There were also some canoes there, which was nice. Um, just to give them an, an activity to do. Um, this is a very engaging camp. Um, it's a very uh, academic camp as well. And so this is to kind of balance that out and give them some downtime, but also some, some fun activities. For this year's camp, um, we've changed a few things. So last year, the camp ran for about five days. It was, I believe, from July 14th all the way to the 20th, or 
the uh, yeah the twentieth. So the twentieth was a travel day. This year we decided to extend it by one day. So this year's camp will be from July fourteenth through to the twenty first. And just some important little bits of information here: um, the students stay in a hotel uh, with the counselors who are university students. Um, Myself, I am one of the uh, coordinators, so they'll be st I'll be staying there as well. Um, the hotel typically has its check-in start at 3 p.m. So if uh, you have any flight arrangements, or if you're going to be driving in or traveling with your, uh, your camper, we advise to try and aim for around this time. Um, or if they do arrive early, let us know so that we can have somebody meet them uh, where, however they'll be arriving and be able to, you know, to supervise them, keep them busy until check-in starts. So check-in, like I said, on July 14th will be at 3 p.m. After the week is done, when we check out of the hotel, if you're picking your kids up or if uh, they need to fly back, try to make the arrangements as close to, you know, before or a little after 11 a.m. This is because we need to be able to give all of the room keys at this time and have everybody successfully checked out. And also, if it just so happens that they can't leave um, right away or around this time, just communicate that with us when, um, when the uh, acceptance packages for the applications go through. And we'll work with you to make sure that uh, your camper is, uh, has a, is accompanied by somebody while they're waiting to uh, head back home. So finally, uh, these, they're, when we're talking about eligibility here, the camp is really focused on young students. And so we have focused this year on, and last year on SEC 1 and 2, or grade 7 and grade 8 students. So this is kind of the eligibility or the, the age that we're looking for for our students. And um, this is to make sure that you know that they can relate to one another. They're all gonna be, for the most part, coming from different communities. And this just makes it easier for them to bond and also get to know each other. Um, but if you do know somebody who is a little bit older, but is very much engaged and you know, maybe they're thinking of being a health professional one day, or they very much enjoy science. Um, we have an option for junior counselors as well. And this is for uh, people who were campers in the past and who might be a little bit too old to apply as a camper now, or maybe they might be in siege up. Uh, this is typically for students between the ages of 14 and 18. And this is where they start to really develop those um, leadership skills as well. They'll be working with um, a, uh, count, a camp counselor, um, they'll still participate in the activities, but really this is, we're, this is for people who would like to learn skills that might help them become a role model for even their own community. Um, this year, I should also mention that we will be accepting uh, 15 campers and five junior counselors. So with the application process, I'm just going to go ahead and walk through the, uh, what the applications look like. So for our campers, this is the document that you'll find on our website. We also sent these out to schools. Um, and as you scroll down here, we kind of talk about the eligibility again, that we're looking for grade seven and eight students here, um, and inviting people to be junior counselors if they're a little older. Um, so the instructions to apply, there are four parts to this application. One is the application form itself, which is the document that we're looking at right now. Um, there's a nomination form, and I'll get into detail about that in a second. We have a camper challenge, which I'll also speak about. And we ask that we receive a copy of the latest report card. We also have a checklist on the front, so this is to help you um, stay organized. And if you want to see you know, what you have left to do, um, this is, we invite you to kind of check this off as you're going through the application. So the camper application itself, um, this can be filled out by the camper or a guardian. Um, this is where we get some of that key information. So, you know, uh, how do we contact the camper? How do we contact the parent or the guardian? Where can we send our documents to? Um, and also, how, uh, telephone is really important around the time of the camp. Um, this is just information for us and knowing 
who we have coming to our camp. And this helps us also to tailor um, you know, how we engage our audience as well. So we have a pre-camp survey at the same time. You can find this in PDF as well. So you can either print this out and fill it out by hand, or if you prefer, you can work on this on a computer. Text boxes will open and you can go ahead and just uh, answer um, through with your keyboard. Um, this question here, if you're interested in receiving mentorship or tutoring support, we have an electronic tutoring and mentoring program that kind of follows up the camp basically. And it's through this that um, we can keep in touch with students after they've gone home um, and also help support them even while they aren't at the camp or on campus. Yet again, this helps us out in learning uh, how you've learned about the camp or how you heard about it. Um, this is again, this is kind of tying to our program does a number of events uh, throughout the year and we love the idea of having pre people who have been involved in our program um, take part in these events if you know it's convenient for them or if they're in the city, things like that. So basically this is just information sharing. Um, we need this uh, just to uh, complete kind of the profile of the camper who will be applying. Part two is a nomination form. We also call this a letter of support. And this is really to have somebody um, not only vouch for the student, but highlight maybe some skills that they have or some uh, qualities. And this can be leadership. This can be, um, you know, uh, academic successes that they've had, um, interest in health or their community, um, and also their culture as well. So just to give some examples, this can be an educator. It can also be a health professional in the community if they know uh, the camper well, or an elder or community member. Uh, we ask that the person writing this, however, uh, is to be not related to them, just to uh, avoid any bias. Um, so then here is written and signed. Yep. So we ask that this is copied out and that you know the person who is the nominator provide their signature. And we would like it attached to the application form. So if you're sending it your application form physically, we ask that you include it in your package. Or if you're going to be sending this electronically through email, um, and we'll get into how you can send your documents, um, whether it's through fax, email, or by uh, hard copies. Um, a bit, but you can attach it as a PDF to a folder. And here you just have to list the name of your nominator, what is the relationship to the camper, the contact information, and here's a place for their signature as well. Um, and we've kind of given some cues here. So this can either be written as a letter separately from the package, but if they want to write by hand or fill it out um, on the keyboard here, so as you can see, you can. Uh, it's form fillable. Um, and here are some questions that the nominator can uh, answer that kind of lets us know who the prospective camper is. So talking about their strengths and characteristics, and they can write down here. Um, what are kind of their interests? Um, how do they relate to you know, their culture, their community, um, science and health? And yet again, they can write their answers down here. Next page, um, we have two other questions. So here we want to know about how are they as a learner? Do they excel at anything? Um, do they work well with others? And this is more of kind of the classroom setting, I would imagine. Um, or it can, you can even pertain this as um, if they're talking about traditional knowledge and maybe they teach what they know of their traditional knowledge to their peers. So there's a lot of ways you can go about this. Um, and here is if they want to highlight anything personal about the, the, uh, the prospective camper. So this can be about, you know, if they have any leadership skills, if um, you know, they've done anything to really demonstrate that they have a passion for their community or science, this is the place to put that. The camper challenge is something interesting. And the reason why is it's really open as to what you can submit for a camper challenge. Um, you only have to submit one of these, but we give you a couple of examples of what we would like to receive. So you can write a one to two page essay, 
Um, you can write a short story, you can submit a very short video, just one to two minutes, or even a mini photo essay. And the content of this is really for the camper to highlight themselves as, you know, indigenous learners, as, um, you know, their experience in the classroom, as future leaders, so on and so forth. And yet again, we give a couple of ideas to go along with uh, their camper challenges. So he has like a question, what does health and science mean for indigenous people and indigenous communities? Um, do you have any inspirations that help you to succeed and why? Um, maybe what are some of the most important health and wellness issues in your own community? Um, and how do you think these can be improved? Um, and then one that we added this year was, what skills do you hope to learn through attending the 2019 Eagle Spirit Camp? And then how would these skills help you in your academic and even your personal life? Um, and we ask that this be included with the application itself. If you're uh, with a video, you can attach it um, in a folder to uh, your email if that's what you'll be doing. Otherwise, just send us an email and we can uh, figure out how to get a video in. Otherwise, if it's just an essay, just include it with your, um, your application itself. Now, we wanted to go over why we're asking for report cards because we want to be sure that to uh, let you know that we're not using your letter grades in the decision process. We're not looking at how well you did or if there's any like cause for concern. That's not why we're asking for this. What we're looking for is really the comments that your teachers are going to be including. Um, and this is to see, you know, your strengths in the classroom, uh, your work ethic. Um, we want to also see, you know, your attendance as well. And uh, this will help our team in understanding where you're going to be coming from while attending this camp. Finally, you finish the application here with the name of the camper and their signature with the date, and the same with their parent or guardian. And if you're not the parent or guardian of the camper and you've been helping them with the uh, application, we just ask that you leave your name and um, you know your info, like what is your relationship to the applicant? Can you date it? And then give us a phone or email, as this might help us in letting the camper know of the decision once we've uh, closed the application process. And we just have a thank you here. Um, yes, so we should be, once we've closed the application process, it's going to take us a little bit just to review all of the applications we've received. And from there, we'll start sending out emails and physical copies of acceptance forms and answers of um, the selection process. Um, we have listed here our website as well, which takes you right to our uh, McGill website. And this is the email as well that if you have any questions um, and if you want to submit your documents, it would be to this one right here. There's a second email that I've included as well, um, and you'll see that in the presentation. So that's it for camper applications. Now we go into junior counselor applications. So it's the same format. It's just what we're asking for is a little bit different. So we start off with the eligibility and we say that this is for students who are either previous campers or older youth in later high school or CJP level. So between the ages of 14 and 18. There's a responsibility section because we, we are looking at this as not only a learning experience for the student, but at the same time, this is a chance for them to uh, get a bit of work experience as well. So we have listed some of the responsibilities. We have a training session uh, that we put our counselors and junior counselors through. And so we ask that they can be available for that. Um, I remembered mentioning how uh, check-in is usually at three, but the training session would be before that, just so everybody is ready and um, they know the protocol and they have all of their emergency contacts and so forth, um, and they're ready for when the campers start to arrive. So they, we ask that they be available um, on the 14th, but before check-in, so usually in the morning. Um, you know, they have to be able to work with the team. Uh, they have to be able to communicate with their with uh, the camp coordinator or myself um, or their senior counselor in case you know they want to express uh, anything that they're seeing you know amongst the campers or um, if, uh, you know, participation and things like that. Um, 
they also are going to be, um, they won't be entirely responsible for the safety of campers, but we want them to lead by example. So being respectful in the activities, participating, trying to engage their fellow campers and making sure that they're staying engaged at the same time. And finally, they have to be there for the entire week. So from those dates from July 14th to the 21st, we ask that people who are applying to be junior counselors are available for the entire time. Um, benefits, so as with the campers and everyone else, we cover all of the accommodations. They stay at a hotel in Montreal that's right next to McGill campus. Um, and we provide all of the meals throughout each day. Um, this is an opportunity for them to build experience working with other Indigenous youth and it gets, it gets them experience in you know, learning how to be a leader. So they develop those leadership skills at the same time. The payment that we had listed last year was $750. This might change this year and it will, and if it does, it will share that on the acceptance packages for the junior counselors who have, or applicants who have been accepted. And the only thing that might change is that it might go up. Otherwise, we're looking at about 750 for their time working as a junior counselor. So for their application, there are a few things different from the, uh, from the camper application form. They need to complete their own junior counselor application form completely. Uh, we ask that they have a nomination form same as the campers. And if they can give us a copy of a CV or a resume, um, and this would let us know, you know any skills that they have uh, through their experience, um, uh, how engaged they are, maybe they do extracurricular activities, they help out in their community, things like that. Um, the details are basically the same here. Uh, we've included yet again another checklist. So junior counselor application form, same thing. This is just first name and last name and personal information, uh, their parents' contact information or guardian's contact information, their mailing address. So if we ever wanted to send out something um, related to the camp or maybe our program, we know who to send it to. Um, this is for our personal information as well, knowing uh, which nations we have participating in our camp. And finally, what level of study are they in? So are they in CJP or are they in late high school? Same thing, have they heard of the camp before? They have a sibling that uh, attended or a cousin. Um, would they like to receive mentoring throughout the school year? And how did they hear about the camp? And that's part one. So then when we move to the letter of support here, same thing as for the campers. We ask that you know they have a health professional, an elder community member, or an educator nominate them for the camp. So this is a letter that can be separate or it can also be um, fill in the blanks with here. Yet again, this is form fillable. So if you know the nominator prefers to answer this uh, completely on a computer, they have that option as well instead of having to print it out. And these are basically the same types of questions, but just for um, our junior counselor applicants. So identify any strengths and characteristics of them, fill in. Um, what are their goals and interests? Do they relate to health and science and also their community and culture? Um, so then talking about how they work as learners, this can be at the community level, or this can also be at the level of school. Uh, what do they excel at? Um, how are they in team environments? And finally, you know, to share any information that you would feel would support their case. You know, if they have yet again any leadership qualities or if they participated in you know, community activities, things like that. Just to let us know of who it is that is applying. Um, and we ask that you submit at the end of this. There's also the CV that needs to be attached. So I have that, I'm just gonna scroll back up here. Uh, I think it is right here. So the part three here. The CV is something that you would attach uh, separately from this application. Uh, you would include it in your package if you're sending it in physically, or you would make a PDF or a Word document of it if you're sending it to us via email. So I'm just gonna scroll back down. Um, same as before, we just need the signature you know, of the applicant and to, for it to be dated, uh, along with their parent or guardian signature. And we also, Anybody who helped them out with their application, 
it'd be nice to also get your information as well, just so we can keep everybody in the loop. And then we just have our thank you down here saying that we're gonna be contacting people in about May. So as we move back to the presentation here, that's it for junior counselor applications. Now, as I said earlier, if you, however you wanna submit your application, um, if any of these methods are easier, maybe it's easier for you to send them in physically, sometimes it might be easier to send them by fax, we have all of this listed on our website and in the applications as well. And when this video gets posted, you'll also see, um, you'll see this information yet again. So you can email it to us at indigenous.health at mcgill.ca. Um, if you wanted to fax it to us, you can um, title it for, you can send it um, with the name Indigenous Health Professions Program at this number. So 514-398-4423, and we will get that. And finally, if you want to send your uh, application in physically, we have our mailing address listed on our application. It's also here. So our office is the Indigenous Health Professions Program at 36 05 de la Montagne. Uh, we're office number 001. And we're in Montreal, Quebec. And our postal code is H3G2M1. And I have listed down here some of our um, websites. You can yet again find all of this information and you can get into contact with us via our Facebook page, our McGill page, the website, or our phone number listed on our website as well. And that's basically the process to applying to our Eagle Spirit Camp. So I say walalio uh, from my language, or thank you all for watching this video. Um, again, if you have any questions about the camp or the application process, you can also contact me at my email here. So that's ihpp-outreach.med at mcgill.ca. Um, you can also contact the emails that are listed on our website and we will do our very best to answer all, any questions that you may have.